This is the all new Kia EV6, the latest fully electric vehicle from the brand. This is a car that's capable of charging at over 200 kilowatts per hour, giving you about 80% in just 20 minutes. It's big, but not too large. It has a SUV feel to it, but a coupe at the same time. Inside, you realize that you get a lot more space than it looks on the outside. And photos and videos really don't do this car justice. If you do see one, be sure to tag us on Instagram at GWRKIA popping up on your screen right now. The biggest Kia showroom in the whole of Europe. So today we're going to find out just how this car is, how it is on the outside, the inside. We'll take it for a bit of a drive around town here in the city as well and on the motorway and see if this is the best new electric car on the market. So here we are in the all new Kia EV6. We're gonna take this car for a short drive then to see what's it all about on the road. You can see I've got a USB cable here, but you can in fact charge this car with the wireless charger. So I am told, I've never done this before, but let's see, yeah, there you go. If you put it there, you can see it becomes a wireless charger, but I'm just gonna go ahead and hook this up. As of course, if you plug your car, uh, sorry, if you plug your phone in to the car via a USB, it does indeed charge quicker. So I'll just adjust my chair a little bit, move it forward. The adjustment is quite great. You can see the adjustment in the steering wheel here, move back and forth, up and down. It's great, I'll leave it just about there. So you can, hopefully you can see that speedometer there for you as well. Go ahead and put the headlights on automatic. Don't need to be wasting that. I love the gear select here. You just flick it to drive. And you see, if you heard that the handbrake, I'll do it again for you. It comes on automatically. You can see the handbrake is on right now. I'm in park. I go ahead and move this to drive with my foot on the brake. You can see the handbrake there is in fact automatically released, which is a great feature. This car, of course, being fully electric, everything is sort of electric and automated. It's great. We have the 72% battery and a whopping 195 miles. This car again, charging from about zero to 80% using Kia's 800 watt charging technology, which is absolutely amazing, fantastic, I must say. Will charge in about 20 minutes. Uh, I think that's amazing really, to charge from zero to 80 that quickly is something truly spectacular. And it can charge, it will give you a charge in just four and a half minutes of up to 60 miles, which is insane. Four and a half minutes is, you know, the amount of time it might take you to uh, make a coffee perhaps or a cup of tea, but it's just insane how quickly these new electric vehicles charge these days. One thing I really want to show you here, if I indicate here now to the right, you can see there I get a blind spot camera, which is something so amazing, really. I think all cars should have that. It's so good. Rather than having to do that shoulder check, you can just do that and it's amazing if i press the uh oh, i wasn't going fast enough but you see there it said recuperation paddles i wasn't going quick enough for it to detect me doing it if i am driving along and i press these paddles it can regen from the braking which basically means it acts like a modern day formula one car as i let off the accelerator pedal the car slows down and recoups the energy back into the battery of course then maximizing your range. I'm gonna, I'm not sure what that was. I'm gonna go ahead in here, go on the motorway. Perhaps we'll try that first. Which means we need to go all the way around. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch lanes there. Again, you see that camera comes on, which is just so handy and all the blind spot detection software. It's just so amazing how full of technology this car is. You get such cool and little features which sort of add up into your daily life and make it just much easier to drive this car every day and such a sort of enjoyable process really
I'm going to go ahead and stick in this lane. You heard that just now, that little, the little ding was just me pressing the right flappy paddle here in order for it to sort of push itself. I wanted more power when I let off the brake pedal there. So that's exactly what we did. We're gonna go ahead and stay in this lane and go up here on the A4. Going to head west first and then head back in to central London in the West End sort of Knightsbridge area perhaps. And then head back to GW Arkea. Actually heading past GW Arkea in just a moment. If you didn't know, we are home to the biggest Kia showroom in Europe. This is where this car lives and where it belongs. There we go. Four floors of absolute greatness there, the biggest Kia showroom in Europe. So come give us a visit if you're in the London area. Plenty of cars for you to test drive. You can go ahead and call one of our sales team and I'm sure they'll manage to book you in a test drive. You can book a test drive for this car as well now. We are accepting uh, bookings for this car now. It is, of course, in very high demand. So the waiting list may be a few days, but that being said, get yourself booked in, get yourself checked in and uh, have a test drive of the all new Kia EV6 because this car is absolutely spectacular. I'll go ahead and stay on this road if there's not too much traffic because obviously we don't want a video of just traffic. See I put my indicator on there, check my mirror, instead of doing the shoulder blind spot check as you do when you talk to drive. You can just use that little camera there which is just so handy. I just love that feature so much. I think it's just the little things like that which make a car stand out these days from the rest, you know. Even going through all these uh, sort of annoying bumps here in the road, it's just so nice and quiet. It's a nice, lovely, smooth drive here on this Thursday evening in central London. There's a nice Ferrari. Please do let us know down in the comments below what car you'd like to see us review next. We're sort of combining a review video with a point of view drive video here today. see there if I look into the left mirror he's not technically in my blind spot just in case I didn't see him there is a sort of hazard light on that left mirror there it disappeared again which is quite good really it's quite handy if you look over to your left mirror while you're changing lanes and you see that straight away you know that someone's there you may not have seen them but the car sees it all for you it's it's quite amazing really all this technology Right then, so the road opens up here a little bit then. We're entering the zone of the national speed limit. Straight away, you see there, it went from 40 to 70. Go ahead, I'll put our foot down a bit, and you can just see it picks up speed so well. The car behind me has a bit of distance. If I just slow down a bit here and put my foot down, There you have it, it's 70 mile an hour that quick. Caught up with that BMW there fairly quickly. If I go ahead and disable that regen braking, because obviously we don't need that on the motorway. It's just so smooth. The 
car now, I'm barely pressing the accelerator there. You can see my foot is actually off. We're still cruising, it just uses its own motors to sort of push itself there for you. It's such a smooth and amazing drive, this car. Very impressed by the Kia EV6 so far. You can see, we've still got 190 mile hour, uh, sorry, 190 mile hour, 190 miles range with 70% left in the battery there. You see a car as it comes to my right there that has a warning light on the right, pops up in my mirror and on the digital drivers this way as well. There it goes again. Just keeping you aware of your surroundings. It's quite remarkable really how much technology these cars are filled with. speed here again. And you see with the slightest of ease it picks up speed so quickly. If I go ahead and go to this lane here as the speed limit drops to 50 now. I'm going to just slow down. There you are. And you can program it so while you're doing the navigation you can add a stop for your charging as well. It's really quite remarkable. Right. Go ahead and click that. And you see they just added a sort of uh, assisted steering for me there. You see where that green light is? The car helps you while you're steering so you don't accidentally veer over into someone else's lane. Quite great really. You can see I'm going to take my hands fully off the wheel. Just let this truck go. It is steering itself, making minor adjustments there. You see in the wheel, it's quite remarkable. The car sort of driving itself, really. It's amazing how much technology all these new cars have. And you can see there, it's showing me exactly what junction to turn off in. So I'm going to have to go ahead and change lane here really quickly. I'm going to go ahead and do a U turn from this junction. It's actually speeding its stuff up for me. I'm not actually pressing the accelerator there. I can press the brake myself, of course, but it is in fact driving itself there. Quite remarkable, really. And of course, when you decelerate to a lower speed, when it realizes you're approaching a junction, it will stop and disable that. And you can see and notices the white van there in front of me straight away. It's amazing how quiet these electric cars are. You can see they have that sort of artificial whine to them, which I'm actually quite a big fan of. It's grown on me quite a bit. It makes them sound very futuristic, really. It's quite... It's quite cool. Let's switch lane here again. This car, considering how big and heavy it is, it just pushes with the slightest of ease. Really quite amazing. 186 miles to charge. You can see I've got the car in eco mode. If I press drive mode here, go into normal, it drops down to 181 miles. And of course in sport, and everything turns red there, which I love. The mileage drops even more, but we're gonna leave it on normal for now while we're here on the motorway.
see there again all these little minor adjustments in the steering wheel. I don't really touch it here. We are in fact going around a bend and the car is turning itself. It is quite amazing. Go ahead and overtake this van really quickly. Everything just feels so nice. Even, I mean, these stitches here in the steering wheel, you would think they might get a bit annoying and sort of rub against your fingers over time, but it's just, it's so prestige and everything just feels so nice. It sort of feels sort of too nice to touch, really. I don't want to start touching all the different buttons here because I don't want to get them dirty. This car just feels that nice and that prestige, really. See there, you can set how far you want it from the car in front of you. We'll leave it like that as we are on the motorway. I need to keep a safe distance, of course. And you can see the mileage there is not dropping drastically. And some electric cars when you go on the motorway the mileage goes down by quite a bit you end up doing 20 miles range for a 10 mile journey which is not too great of course compared to petrol diesel and of course hybrid cars but with this car you've seen the mileage we've done is what has in fact been deducted from the mileage up on the screen there which is very good it holds its mileage very well and of course you can get a heat pump this particular car which basically means in the colder winter months as we get into November December now electric cars obviously don't perform as well with their battery being too cold however if you use the heat pump to preheat the battery in certain conditions it means that the mileage will last longer and of course the drive you have will be a bit more optimal it is all quite fascinating and great technology that they have here in this car enabling you to have sort of smoothest journey possible I guess see now the speed has dropped to 40 and get to 40 nice and safely make sure no one's behind me And again, like I said before, if you prefer to see these sort of videos with absolutely no talking, then please do let us know down in the comments below. But if you prefer a sort of point of view review of any car, do let us know what car that may be and what sort of style and format you prefer here on the Norton Way channel. While well, you're at it, be sure to like that video and hit that subscribe button with the bell on to of course receive notifications when we upload every friday that is every friday in the evening i have a video for you on a different car every week that is
see that as I drive past all these cars, it's actually feeding me all this information on heads up digital driver's display in real time. It's actually quite amazing, really. How it does all that using all the different cameras and sensors it has all buried in the body panels. Feeds me all this information in real time, which is great. See there, it actually has sounds of nature, they call it. You can flick through all the different sort of white noise, background noise there for you. You can put that up, it sounds like oceans. The forest there we have. It's a fireplace, one of my favorites here. It's quite cool really, just how a lot of people like to have you know, white noise, background noise when they're studying, or even falling asleep while you're here driving on a long journey. If you want something a bit more relaxing after a long stressful day of work, instead of listening to music or the radio or a podcast or anything, put on one of these nice relaxing background sounds to help you get along with your journey. Again, things like that, which are very neat and handy features I must say. I'm gonna go ahead and swap lanes here to let this Land Rover go. He's been behind me for quite a while now. Turn that down a bit, don't need to hear a cafe. rainy day. We'll leave it on a rainy day. As it looks like it is indeed going to turn into a rainy day here in West London. You can see here, of course, plenty of space in the centre console, two cup holders, two on either side there as well. A lovely sound system, and I love these lights here you get across as well. Can't really tell in the daytime, but they do look really nice in the night as well. And of course, all the touchscreen functions here for you as well. Heated seats, heating steering wheels, more controls here as well. So it's very prestige, it feels very expensive this car, I must say. A lot more. It feels a lot more than what you pay for. Pay for the car, that's for sure. Turn that down, don't need it that much. Again, indicating left, it shows me, <coughs> excuse me, my left blind spot camera there, which also comes on while parking. Maybe I can show and demonstrate that later, which is obviously quite handy because you don't want to be curving these brand new alloys on this car, which are very nice. Yeah, obviously we're down to 
67% battery there, which is not too bad, too bad at all. Go ahead and we can switch back. To, I love when you go into sport, everything turns red there. You can see even these lights here, they turn red, sort of greenish, bluish, and eco. Not quite sure what that gentleman's doing. He just ran a red light. Oh dear. Unlucky for him, he caught that on video and will be going on YouTube, but he did in fact run a red light. I think he got confused with these traffic lights up here, but it's a bit unfortunate for him. In this car, dare I say, 30, 40 mile an hour just seems so effortless. You're just cruising along. It feels like you're doing 10 or 20. It's just so quiet and so nice. Really, it's just such a, a smooth, enjoyable experience driving this car. Especially in London, that is as well. The traffic you get in this city, unfortunately, driving can be quite a strain on you every day after work. In a car like this, no problem, no problem at all. You can get, get in, go to work, have a long day at work, come back, and you'll feel as good as new. It's just so comfortable, it's amazing. See that when it comes to junctions, it sort of tells you which lane to stay in. It told me to stay in the furthest two right lanes, which is very handy because, of course, some navigations in some cars, it's not that great. You sort of get confused, especially here in London. But this is you know, this is very good. Dropping to 30 mile an hour now. Step on the brakes there, I was going too quick. Not quite sure why it's 30, but well, it's telling me, so we'll stick to that. I thought this road used to be 40, in fact, but perhaps they changed it to 30. As everyone else goes there, there's some speeds and overtakes us, but never mind, we're gonna stick to the speed limit. So, of course, the car's Heavier, so downhill it does speed up, so I've got to be careful of that. Keep my foot slightly there on the brake. Give it a little tap. We do go ahead and go above 30. And you can see, in fact, the car is in fact steering itself right now. It's not me really doing anything. It's correcting itself constantly and staying in the middle of the lane very impressive by the sort of self-driving capabilities of this car. Of course, it's telling me there to keep my hands on the wheel. It's not completely autonomous. Heavily assisted, which is great. It just takes the burden out of driving every day.
And as we slow down here, is of course by law, for any all the new electric cars to make some sort of sound to notify other road users and drivers and pedestrians of their presence, because of course you don't get a screaming engine sound. And of course, in this car you get that sort of artificial electric whine, which I quite like. If you can sort of hear it there silently if I turn this off. Up to about 10 or 15 miles an hour, I believe, you need to have a sound on all electric cars, and this makes a very gentle, nice sound, which is quite quite nice and relaxing, really. It's not too in your ear. Very gentle. You can see there, I mean, just the materials and everything is just so sturdy. This sort of floating centre console, even, is just so solid, you know. It doesn't feel like it's going to break or anything flimsy. Even up here when you touch everything, it's all solid and properly well built. Kia have done a really spectacular job on this brand new car here, the all new Kia EV6. Something which really I didn't really expect from Kia, so it came out of nowhere with the whole uh, rebranding and everything. You know, it was quite amazing to see what they've built here. And again, why pay money for other more expensive brands when you're really just paying for the name if you can get something like this for a whole lot of less money and you're getting the exact same performance better looks better tech inside and what's the point you might as well get with a kia ev6 and of course a kia ev9 being teased to us by kiva uh, not too long ago it's sort of i'm sure a bigger version of this I'll wait and see what they get with that. I'll just let the cyclist go here. And that would be quite interesting to see what they do with that as well, whether or not it'll be based on this particular platform as well. I'm sure it will be. It'll be a bigger version of this, the proper SUV, big family SUV, fully electric SUV. That'd be quite interesting to see what they do with that and how it fares up with this EV6. go ahead and put in GWR Kia back on the navigation because I think this is going to take us too long to drive in to central London in the uh, Knightsbridge area. I love that sort of mechanical keyboard sound that the keyboard makes here when you type it. GWR Kia, I'll search for that. GWR set us destination. Forgive me, I haven't really used his navigation much before. Twenty minutes to do just four and a half miles. But that is, of course, the uh, joys of central London living. I'm going to need to turn to the left here. You heard that beep there telling me this guy's letting me go. Thank you, sir. It was beeping to let me know that there was, in fact, someone behind me. Which, again, is quite handy. Even though you have all these mirrors and cameras and all that as well, it's good to have a little beep there as well. For extra safety and precaution, because, I mean, why not?
car, of course. Being quite big and large on the inside, but then on the outside, it's not too big. You can, you saw as I squeeze there past a rubbish truck, it's not too bad. Maybe not as small as that, but quite a small car when it comes to this particular class of car. Go ahead and go left from here. Might as well let all these people go, why not? Let's see. It does get a lot of looks, this car. That's one thing for sure. No matter where you go, this car does get a lot of looks. I think we need to be in the right lane now, which is great. Oh dear. I'll go ahead and just wait for the traffic. And then just turn around right. You see there, if it gets too quiet, as it can in these electric cars, just put on these calm ocean waves to calm you down. Very nice, a very nice feature. See, as I turn my indicator off, that will disappear. If my left indicator on, it will come on as well there on the left. Another great feature, that is. You can see it's actually quite funny, he's detecting all these cars that are turning in front of me there. It's actually quite funny. You can see the reflection on that van there, these lovely new headlights, they just look so amazing. Can go ahead and switch on the main ones there, but I think the daytime ones just look so nice. Can actually go ahead and leave it on automatic there. Again, they're just giving you a warning. As I was playing with the driving modes there, I of course saw the car in front of me go, but I'm not quite sure what this one is. Oh dear. Uh, the car was going, but of course the car itself gave me a warning. Another useful feature there buried in the system is all these little things add up. Again, making your 
daily driving routine, uh, routine, sorry, that little bit more enjoyable and easy, if you will. You can see there as I let off the brake and go on it again, that little bar on the bottom is what that regen braking is. As the traffic moves on, I'll try and show and demonstrate it for you again. That is, of course, the technology that I was talking about, which is used in modern day Formula One cars. If I let off here, I quickly press on the brakes, you can see that bar goes up and it shows you just how much you're regening there in power, which is quite, quite an interesting feature, really. Of course, then you can use these paddles to turn it up and down. Put it on max there, and that basically means eye paddle mode is activated. So now, technically, if I let my foot off the brake and I just pre-use the accelerator, if I get used to how I can feather the accelerator, if I let off, it should bring me to a complete stop because the amount of power that, that regen braking is using is greater than that of which I'm using with the accelerator. It's that powerful that it's actually braking the car for me. It'll be quite interesting to see as I maneuver and squeeze past this truck. Well, you see, I let off, I'm not pressing the brake at all. I just use this and let it come to a stop, just like that, and I'm stopped. Which is quite amazing, really. If you get used to using that, I think around town sort of become the norm rather than going back and forth, back and forth. Again, it just makes driving that a little bit easier rather than using the brake pedal as well. Just use the accelerator pedal and let the car do it for you all while you regen power back into the battery as well, which of course extends your mileage and you get more miles out of your electric vehicle. careful there because as soon as you turn it off you just end up shooting beyond past 30 mile an hour it's quite dangerous though, obviously of course don't want to be speeding now.
also give me another warning to keep my hand on the steering wheel. So I just wanted to show and demonstrate for you there. Now it's guiding me along, which is very remarkable.